Before you skip further in the video, I need to tell you some things about the rankings that are important, so please bear with me. I know some people will not be able to go through. They'll have to skip till they see their favorite player or whatever. Please give me a second. There are actually like 20, but this was the hardest thing I've had to do in a minute, right? Ranking the top 32 receivers in the NFL was super, super difficult because there are so many number one caliber receivers in the NFL right now, and honestly... Like, number 20, even, like, up to almost number 32 through 10 was so close. It's splitting hairs with some of these guys. Had to do the best I could to rank them. So, it was really, really difficult. So, I wouldn't take too much stock in about 11 to 25 because a lot of them really could have gone either way. A guy could realistically move up five, six, seven spots, and I could get on board with it. But I gave the best ranking... Based on not just this season, I think that'd be ridiculous, but the past couple years with a heavier emphasis on this season. And also, rookies, we've only seen maybe 5 to 11 games for these guys. I think at most you could have played 12 games up to this point. So rookies have been held down a little bit because we haven't seen enough of them. We haven't seen them do it for long enough. So the guys who had great years last year or the year before or a combination are going to be ranked a little bit higher, but I hope, you know, maybe around this time next year, those rookies last year could be up super, super high. So maybe your CD Lambs, your Jerry Judy's, your Chase Claypool's, your, you know, any of these sick rookie receivers. There have been a lot of them. So, and there are so many talented receivers. This was so difficult. But with that being said, this is ranking the top 32 receivers in the NFL. Not the best receiver from every team. I think that's easy. But the top 32 receivers in the NFL. So not every team's going to be on here. We do have a couple for multiple teams. Hit that subscribe button if you are not subscribed already. And I will see you guys for the ranking. I appreciate you guys hitting that subscribe button. It means a lot to me. It's free. And you can always unsubscribe later if you want. But we have more rankings. So make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for that. At number 32, we have Darius Slayton. And I hope you don't think I'm... Starting off with a perceived Giants fan bias, picking Slayton over some more popular players like Jarvis Landry or Julian Edelman, maybe, who are both off this list. But Slayton has been fantastic, almost entirely eliminating his drop issues at Auburn. As a rookie, Darius Slayton averaged over 50 yards per game and eight touchdowns, and in 2020 has nearly identical stats for yards per game and catch percentage at 53 yards per game, and his catch percentage is at 57%. Nearly the same exact as last year. He only has three touchdowns, but part of that can be attributed to Daniel Jones missing him down the field on countless occasions. I think a lot of Steelers fans are going to be really upset about not seeing Steelers on this list, but they just kind of spread the wealth around so much. Chase Claypool is a rookie. You have Deontay Johnson, who really doesn't have the numbers, and Juju Smith-Schuster, whose numbers last year were not very good, and this year also aren't spectacular compared to some other players in the league. So no Steelers on this list. I know that seems crazy, but kind of just didn't make the cut over some of these other guys like Marvin Jones at number 31. He's a free agent at the end of 2020 and he's due a pretty decent payday. As from 2017 to 2019 he averaged more than 60 yards per game but has a knack for finding the end zone because since 2017 he has nearly 30 touchdowns. At number 30 we have Devontae Parker. He finally had his breakout season in 2019 after years and years of waiting for him to literally do anything and then he put up 1,200 yards Nine touchdowns with Ryan Fitzpatrick feeding him the football, helping him average 75 yards per game. This year, he has almost 650 yards and four touchdowns with a mix of Fitzmagic and Tua Tungavailoa. At 29, we have Robbie Anderson having a big breakout season in 2020 with over 900 yards in 12 games, but only two touchdowns. But I'd be lying if I said it wasn't fun to watch someone who is also 6'3", like I am, and nearly as skinny, ball out nearly every week. He also told a cop he would nut in his wife's eye. And that's a direct quote. I'm not making that up. That's not a joke. You can Google it. At number 28, we have Mike Williams. He's a big body deep threat who can struggle to create separation at times due to his size. But he's a great jump ball receiver. And that's highlighted by his league's 24th best contested catch rate in 2019. And some amazing highlight plays he puts up on a week to week basis. At number 27, we have the only rookie on the list. Sorry, Chase Claypool, you had a really great stretch, but 
overall, the consistency isn't there like it is for the other guys. So Justin Jefferson, who's been amazing this year, has played up to like one of the league's best receivers, comes in at 27. He's been the best rookie receiver. I had to put him on the list somewhere. He has over 900 yards and six touchdowns through only 11 games, although he was almost completely shut down by Jair Alexander in Week 8 with only 26 yards. That should be a really fun matchup for years to come as Jefferson continues to improve his game. He had to be on the list somewhere. I think 27 makes a lot of sense for right now. I think if he continues this type of play up next year, he could easily catapult himself inside the top 15. No question about it. At number 26, we have Tyler Boyd. One of the best slot receivers in football, Boyd had just over 1,000 yards in 2018 and in 2019 and is on track to do that again in 2020, averaging about 65 yards per game, but his catch percentage this year is almost 80%. 25, we have the first of the two Rams receivers on this list in Robert Woods, another receiver that feels slightly underrated. He put up back-to-back -back seasons of over 1,100 yards in 2018 and 2019. Although he only had eight combined receiving touchdowns in that span, this year he's averaging 60 yards per game, but does have five touchdowns in 11 games. 24 is going to be Cortland Sutton. He unfortunately tore his ACL week one. But in 2019, he enjoyed a breakout year with over 1,100 yards and six touchdowns. I hope he can come back healthy in 2021 and get back to the near top 10 player he was looked like he was trending toward. At 23, we got Cooper Cup. He was targeted plenty last season, and it paid off with almost 100 catches for over 1,100 yards and 10 touchdowns, although the touchdown production hasn't exactly been there in 2020 with only two TDs. Cup is still averaging about 70 yards per game, sharing the wealth with Robert Woods. 22 is Tyler Lockett. The picture of consistency as he gets open and catches the football is just what he does. Great receiver. He has great hands and great sideline awareness and has been a really underrated target for Russell Wilson over the last three years as his catch rate is over 75% with 26 touchdowns and almost 3,000 yards in that span. In 2020, he's averaging 70 yards per game with eight touchdowns. 21 is a super weird one, controversial. And if this was two or three years ago, Antonio Brown's gonna be ranked inside the top two. But since then, a lot has changed. He hasn't been able to stay on the field as he's an absolute maniac and a head case nut job. But he still is a first down machine on limited targets over the last couple years, but at almost 33 years old, this is probably part of a natural decline and regression that we see with receivers even younger than this. So when AB's on the field, or at least when he was on the field a few years ago, was unreal. Didn't do anything last year, hasn't done much this year. Of course, hasn't done much this year is due to an eight game suspension and getting worked into the Bucks system, but the numbers are what they are. And can't go off imaginary numbers or three years ago. This is now. As Chris Godwin had a breakout year last year with over 1,300 yards and nine touchdowns, averaging 95 yards per game, but seems to be a little bit back down to earth this year, down to averaging 70 yards per game in 2020 with the addition of Tom Brady, Rob Gronkowski, and even Antonio Brown, who we just talked about to the Tampa Bay offense. Godwin's a great player, but really only has one year of elite play. Holds him down here, but just inside the top 20. At number 19, A.J. Brown. He burst onto the scene last year as a rookie with over 1,000 yards and 8 touchdowns, and he seems to be improving with over 600 yards and 8 touchdowns, but in only 9 games. A.J. Brown's a versatile weapon for the Titans that could put up even better numbers elsewhere, not in a power run scheme like they have in Tennessee. 18's Brandon Cooks, seemingly in a new offense with a new team every year. Cooks still manages to be one of the best deep threats with solid hands and has done a lot to open up the Houston Texans offense so far this year. Has really been largely accountable for Will Fuller playing so well, other than the PEDs that <laughs> Will Fuller was taking. But Brandon Cooks has put up almost 1,100 yards or more in four straight years from 2015 to 2018 with the Saints, Patriots, and Rams and seems to be back to his old self with over 700 yards in 11 games this year. 17 was one of the toughest receivers to rank. It's Calvin Ridley. He's a great route runner who's improved every single year, but just happens to be playing second fiddle in Atlanta behind Julio Jones. But that hasn't hurt his numbers too much, as he has 24 touchdowns over the last three years, including seven already in 2020 in just 10 games. Ridley has yet to put up over 1,000 yards a season in his career, in a season in his career, but I'm sure that will be different at the end of 2020 as he's averaging almost 80 yards per game, and still we have six games to go in the season for him. 16's Kenny Galladay. 
Doesn't get open quite as much as other receivers on this list, like Calvin Ridley, who we just talked about at 17, but has elite hands and ability to go up and get the football. His contested catch ability is up near, uh, up near the top of the league, right? He's put up over 1,000 yards in 2018 and in 2019, with the league leading 11 TDs last year. He has struggled with injuries a little bit this year, but still has managed about 70 yards per game in five games. 15 is another tough receiver to rank. Like, it gets so close with some of these guys in here, but I'm putting Allen Robinson at 15. He gets open at a great level for someone of his size, and his ability to high point the football is near the top of the NFL. His numbers struggle a little bit because of the play of his quarterbacks, if you can even call them that, in Mitch Trubisky and Nick Foles. They've been garbage, but he still managed to put up over 800 yards and five touchdowns in 11 games in 2020. He also had 1,100 yards and seven touchdowns last year. Who knows where he'd be on this list with a better QB. 14 is Adam Thielen. Might have been a little bit higher on this list, but has been hurt by injuries last year and only averaged 40 yards per game. This year, that numbers jumped to over 60 yards per game, but he's turned into a touchdown machine. 11 TDs in 10 games. 13 is DJ Moore. He's a solid route runner with good hands, and he showcased that all last year with over 1,100 yards in just 15 games. So 1,100 yards, amazing for 16. Missed a game, still did that. It was just his second year last year. DJ Moore is a really good player. This year, showcasing that again. 900 yards, 12 games, and he's averaging almost 80 yards per game. At number 12, we have maybe the most controversial one on this list. Tough to say. I think there's going to be a lot of controversial ones. DK Metcalf. He's arguably the best deep threat in the NFL right now. Metcalf is somewhat of a one-trick pony, but his trick is really, really good. He gets deep and he catches the football in traffic down the field. He currently leads the NFL in yards with just over a thousand and has nine touchdowns as well. And it's also the biggest thing. He's done this against elite competition. Let me name you the cornerbacks he's beat so far this year. Stefan Gilmore, Patrick Peterson twice, Xavier Howard, Tredavious White, Jalen Ramsey, Darius Slay. Some of those are the top cornerbacks in football, right? And that right now, there's not a corner in football who can match up with Metcalf's size and speed. DK stays outside of the top 10 on this list, this list based on his limited route tree at the moment and his inconsistency with catching the football. He has multiple concentration drops. is the ninth most drops in the NFL this year. His fantasy numbers are amazing, but the talent at the position above him and this only being his second year hurts his ranking a little bit, but it wouldn't surprise me if DK ended up being top five within the next two years. Number 11 is another receiver from that draft class, Terry McLaurin. He's a fantastic route runner with elite speed as showcased by his 4 3 5 40 at the Combine two years ago. We think his DK is this amazing deep threat, and he is. Ran 4 3 3 with that straight line speed. But Terry McLaurin can fly as well at 4 3 5 and has that fast play speed as well. It's not just about 40 time, right? Not only does he love to block and is quite good at it, he makes a name for himself, edging out DK Metcalf as the best receiver in this draft class by his ability to create separation at an elite level, but can still go up and get the football as he had the best contested catch rate in the NFL last year. 70% on 19 contested targets as a rookie. Not to mention, he's put up these great numbers while catching passes from backups like Dwayne Haskins, Alex Smith, Colt McCoy, Kyle Allen, Case Keenum. This year, McLaurin's averaging almost 90 yards per game and is 963 yards on 69 catches. Nice. And this is not a shot at DK Metcalf. I think Terry McLaurin just edges him out a little bit. And it just doesn't come down to random backup QBs throwing him the ball over Russell Wilson, who's, despite never getting an MVP vote before, is a perennial MVP candidate. He just, just edges him out. Now inside the top 10, we have Amari Cooper. He's one of the best route runners in the NFL. Like, he's top five route runner in the NFL. And he put up almost 1,200 yards and eight touchdowns as a number one weapon for the Cowboys receiving core last year. Cooper has almost 850 yards this year, three touchdowns. And remind you, like, that's not playing with Dak Prescott. That's playing with Andy Dalton, Ben DiNucci, uh, Garrett Gilbert. Like, there have not been great QBs for the Cowboys this year. He still has almost 850 yards on 71 catches. He's averaging almost 80 yards per game. His catch percentage is above 70. He had a rough year or two with the Raiders where he struggled with some drops, but those don't really exist anymore. Amari Cooper, just based on his route running ability alone, has got to be top 10. Number nine is going to be Odell Beckham Jr. I think this one's going to be polarizing as he is a super polarizing player, but... Odell, when healthy, is dominant. Last year, while playing through a hernia, 
Odell still managed to put up over a thousand yards in a terribly inconsistent offense with wishy-washy QB play from Baker Mayfield after a great rookie year. Either way, Odell still averages over 80 yards per game in his career, although injuries have slowed him down over the last three seasons. When Odell is healthy, he's an unreal playmaker. Injuries push him down the list, but probably not as far as people would want. When he's healthy, he's insane. He played injured all last year, still at over a thousand yards. He drops probably about five or six spots for where he could be when he was healthy about maybe two years ago. But he's still got to be top 10. Tore his ACL, but was off to a pretty good start this year. Number eight is Stefan Diggs. He's one of the best route runners in football and has put up 3,000 yards in 19 touchdowns in his last 40 games. About three years, but some injuries, some missed time in there. This year, he has 945 yards on 80 catches and has managed to find the end zone four times. Number seven is Keenan Allen. Another super consistent player, Allen's put up about 1,200 to 1,400 yards in exactly six TDs in each of his last three seasons after struggling with injuries early in his career. But Allen currently leads the league in catches with 85 and almost 900 yards and seven touchdowns in only 11 games. Keenan Allen is a really, really good player, as all these guys are inside the top 10 and, and even beyond that. Receiver was such a tough position to rank. Number six, we have Mike Evans. He's got elite size, and he's definitely one of the best jump ball red zone threat receivers in the NFL. He already has 11 touchdowns in 12 games so far this year, but only has 600 yards and a career low 51 yards per game this year. That can be expected, though, with the addition of Tom Brady. He spreads the football around to a multitude of weapons that the Bucs have, including the addition of Gronk. They have Cameron Braid at tight end as well. Chris Godwin, who we talked about. Scotty Miller gets some touches. Antonio Brown's on the team now. So it makes sense that Evans... Yards per game could go down a bit, but 11 TDs in 12 games is no joke. He's a pure red zone threat now, and he's put up over 1,000 yards or more in every year of his career thus far. He deserves to be high on this list. Number five is going to be Michael Thomas. He drops a little bit due to injury this year and other guys having crazy seasons. They had to get moved up, but he's certainly elite. Put up over 1,700 yards on a record-breaking 149 catches last season. He has arguably the best hands in the NFL, illustrated by his NFL third best true catch rate of 94.9%, fourth best contested catch rate at 63.3% on 30 targets, not to mention only three drops on 185 targets last season. His route tree may appear limited with only slants and crossers, but much of that is more on the offense being designed around Drew Brees' arm strength at this point in his career into his 40s, and not that Michael Thomas can't get open down the field. Michael Thomas is really good. He got fed the ball last year a lot, 180 targets, 185 targets. So his numbers are really high, but I think the guys ahead of him are just a little bit better. At number four, it's Tyreek Hill. And it's hard to find a bigger overall weapon in the NFL than him, as he's still developing as a route runner and as a receiver in general, but is as big of a deep threat as you'll find in the league. Of course, he has the benefit of being paired with the NFL's best quarterback, who can actually hit him on deep throws. Tyreek Hill still easily gets into the top five with his electric speed as he's averaged over 85 yards per game over the past three years. He leads the NFL in touchdowns at 13 this year and has over 1,000 yards on 68 catches through 11 games. Three is Devontae Adams. He's one of the best route runners in the NFL with arguably the best release in football. It's no surprise to find him inside the top five of this list, but it might be surprising to see him at number three. But over the last three years, including this season, Devontae Adams is averaging more than 90 yards per game and has over 900 yards and 11 touchdowns in 2020 and only nine starts. Adams finally gets the respect he deserves. Two is going to be Julio Jones. He's been one of the two or three best receivers in the NFL over the past decade, and I won't move him lower down the list because of a few poor performances playing on a bad team while dealing with injuries. He's still one of the best playmakers in the NFL as he's gone for over 130 yards in three out of eight games he's played this year and is averaging almost 85 yards per game. He's put up over 1,400 yards or more in six consecutive seasons. Hold on, stat correction. He's put up about. Last year, he had 1,394 yards. I guess he makes up for it in 2015 when he had 1,871 yards and in 2018 when he had 1,677 what a ridiculous stat line. Like, from 2014 to 2019, Julio Jones has over 9,000 yards. I just did like a freaking, what, Dragon Ball Z meme? I've never seen the show. I've seen the meme over 9,000. I don't know what it means. Whatever, just go with it. But that leaves number one, Nuke, DeAndre Hopkins. 
fifth in the NFL in yards after the catch, and over 1,000 yards in each of his last three seasons with 31 touchdowns. This season, he has nearly 1,000 yards in just 11 games, with four touchdowns on 77 catches, including an insane Hail Mary catch and triple coverage. His catch rate is nearly 75%, and he's averaging almost 90 yards per game. It's really, really close, but to me, DeAndre Hopkins is the league's best receiver. It's so close with some of these guys, but DeHop takes a number one spot. That's my receiver rankings. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on quarterback, running back, tight end. I don't know how many positions I'm going to do. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section below. Can't wait to find out why I'm an idiot in the comment section. Absolutely thrilled. But thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing, liking, commenting, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.